let's look at recursion in Python. This won't include the Fibonacci example, which you see everywhere when you're trying to learn recursion. This example was based upon the example by V. Anton Sprawl in his book Think Like a Programmer, available from No Starch Press, which I'm not promoting, but just happens to be where I got it from. Now, what he does is he says, solve the problem iteratively first using for loop. Now, his video is about 10 minutes long, and for the first eight and a half minutes, he doesn't even mention recursion, So, other than the introduction. So what you do is you solve the problem with a for loop, then you reduce the size of the for loop or, or the range by one. Then you solve the single case at the end. Then he, he creates something to solve that, and he calls it the dispatcher function. So then you can remove the for loop, and then you make a recursive function using your function inside your function, and then you add the dispatcher. So we'll look at an example of this in Jupyter Notebook, and hopefully it will, it's not a cheat, but it's kind of a, a good method to be able to call upon when you need it. So I wanted to do this video because the example that I just showed was based on C++, and I just wanted to show this in Python and kind of, still down what I've learned in the past week looking at numerous videos numerous websites and so on so if you like this video it helps you please subscribe and let's get on with the code okay so this example was based on some fictitious temperature sensor data and we've got an array of temperatures and we've got array two with some values the same some different what we want to do is find the sum of the differences. And the example in the video was C++, so I've just quickly gone in and converted it to Python. And the key thing to remember here is we're using for loop. And we have a function which we pass in first array, second array. And we're also passing in the size, or, or rather the length of the array. We're using abs absolute because we want to spot the difference between the values rather than worry about whether they're positive or minus if i run this we'll see the result is eight and i know what you're thinking you think well what if what if one value was positive and one was minus so Let's just check that. So let's say one value was one. Just run that. We've got a difference of 10. So on the second one, we've got a difference of six. There we've got a difference of three, 19 to 16. Now we've got a difference of one. So 10 is the correct answer. So that does work. So even with a positive and a minus. So that's how you would solve it with a for loop, which is kind of the recommendation to start doing this before progressing to trying to solve it with recursion. Now, recursion is not recommended for many scenarios, especially if you are going to be doing lots of recursions because you get stack overflow error in Python once you have 909 or you exceed 999 stack frames. So. Horses for courses. Recursion is very useful for trees and backtracking. In the Invent with Python book by Al Swiger, he shows a really cool example where you can use recursion to solve a maze, which is quite interesting. So let's look at the way to solve this with recursion. This is a solution. And it's using recursion because we've got a function called calDiff, calculate difference. Um, we're actually using that function with inside itself. Now, that is the solution. That's the TLDR. But let's actually look at how we get from the iterative solution to the recursive solution. Okay, let's put this into practice. So we can get rid of count because we're not doing the for loop anymore. And we can get rid of all of that. 
No. We still want to check if the size is zero. Because if it is, we just return, but we're going to return zero. If we didn't return zero, we would get a none type error when our recursion hits the base case. Last le diff. This is going to be a variable which does the comparison on the last element in the array. So we'll be comparing 33 and 32 in this case. How we do that is we do it with abs absolute because we're only interested in the difference. And then we compare array one and then if we used size here, it would be trying to find the index of 5 and it would fail. So we need to do size minus 1, minus array 2, size minus 1. Again, size minus 1 because size is 5, because that's the length of the array or the length of the list. We can't use that because... The indexing starts from zero, so that's actually zero, one, two, three, four. No, we want to, we still call it count. So count, this is where we call our function inside itself, the recursion. We'll pass in a one, a two, And we'll also pass in size minus one because we know what we we want to pass in the reduced size because we've we've handled one of the elements with this line, so it's actually size minus one. I know when I did this to start with, I thought, well, why is it not size minus two? But you need to do the correct number of recursions such that you will be able to get down to zero so that you can return zero and start the stack unwinding. Okay, so if we run this, if we get the successful result, we'll look at, oh, we've got zero. <laughs> that wasn't what I was expecting. Because we need to add the last the last element. So last le diff. Now you think, well, last element difference is only one. So that's only going to change our answer to be equal to one. But it's not because the last element is also part of the recursion. So when we run this, eight. Because on each occasion, the last element diff gets uh, gets returned okay that is the code so this is pretty much the function as we see it and now we want to go and debug it in vs code okay so this is the same code that we just saw let's debug it in VS Code, and what we're going to do is add a breakpoint here, and let's just run it and see what happens. So, debug Python file. You may get it asking you to create a JSON file, which you just click accept. So, to begin with, it knows the array, array, array one, array two, and it knows size five. Those are the variables it's already got knowledge of. And let's start. So step over. OK, so here we go. Call stack, we've now got call diff, which is once. 
last early. So it knows the diff is one. Because it's gone straight to the end and it knows that so size minus one is five minus one, which is four. So it's gone to index four of array one and index four of array two. And it knows the difference is one. So size is now four. And this time, the last LE difference was three because it's gone to four minus one, which is three. So then it went to naught, one, two, three. So it ended up at 19 in array one and 16 in array two. 19 minus 16 is three. So now last LE diff, you can see the call stack growing. Now it will keep growing until you see the size is down to two, and eventually the size will get down to get down to one. And when the size gets to zero, this is when it returns zero. And this is when we do the stack unwinding and the call stack will progressively return. We'll keep returning value plus the last element diff. Until we get to the last one. Then it will print eight because eight is the answer, and that's the same answer that we saw in Jupyter Notebook. So, last LE diff, which in the Anton Sprawl example was called the dispatcher. So this is quite a good example in that it's not the standard Fibonacci example, which you see everywhere. It's probably worth, even if you're not a big fan of VS Code, either debugging it in VS Code, which is quite easy or setting up a debugger and debugging it in Vim or whatever your editor is. So you can actually see the, I think the two things to remember is that for the first half of the code or for the first half of the recursion, all it's doing is reaching the base case. Only after you've reached the base case does it start returning values and popping the, the frames off the stack and effectively building up your answer. Again, this is not the easiest thing to learn, but I'm hoping that practice will make perfect. And hopefully this has given you an alternative way of looking at recursion rather than many of the examples which traditionally do Fibonacci sequence or factorials, which once you've done those, you think, well, that's fine. But what about a real world case? So this is a real world case, really, because you're looking at the differences between temperature sensors. And uh, yeah, admittedly, you could do it with an iterative solution. But at least this is a real world case using recursion. And then eventually you can jump from this type of example to actually learning about trees, trees, graph um, data structures and traversing them, which is one of the key areas where recursion really excels. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up, like the video, all that usual stuff. Thanks. See you again.